Hello everyone. My name is Steve Emerson and I'm the Outbound Product Manager for ITOM Visibility here at ServiceNow. And today I'm going to demonstrate how you can manage multi-cloud resource visibility using a single pane of glass. Just like your on-premise resources, having automated visibility of cloud resources is key to driving technology service operations excellence. ServiceNow ITOM Visibility discovers resources across all major cloud providers and adds them to the CMDB, which is the data foundation for your organization and for ServiceNow. Cloud Discovery discovers your cloud resource configurations, including tags, and it automatically creates dependency relationships. You can configure near real-time updates to occur so that your CMDB is always up to date with the latest cloud resource changes. And once your cloud resources are in the CMDB, you will be able to leverage technology workflow solutions to keep them secure and healthy, to control costs, to reduce risk, and to ensure change governance. But to effectively manage multi-cloud resource visibility, you need a centralized platform with an easy to use experience. ServiceNow's Cloud Operations Workspace provides a single pane of glass for visualizing the entire cloud resource estate. Now, let's see a demo of Cloud Operations Workspace. This is the Cloud Operations Workspace homepage. Now, Cloud Operations Workspace is built on ServiceNow's Next Experience that debuted in the San Diego release. The Next Experience provides a modernized look and feel, including the ability to use dark mode like you see here. Now, we all love dark mode in our personal lives, so it only makes sense for it to be available for us to use at work. Now, let's take a look at what we see here. Up here on the left, we see a trend of configuration items over time. This enables you to see how many cloud resources you are discovering um, and see if it's going up, if it's going down. And you can click on any of these data points to see the detailed resources. Here we see the events by provider for the last 24 hours. ServiceNow has the ability to ingest cloud events so that you can get real-time updates of your cloud um, outside of your regular discovery schedules, and those can be reflected in the CMDB. And of course, we also see our discovery errors today so that an administrator could take a look here and see what's going on to try and fix them. You also have some applications available to help you manage your cloud, which I'll get into shortly. Let's first take a look at settings here. Cloud provider selection. This enables us to choose which cloud providers we can integrate with from our ServiceNow instance. Um, so for example, what you see here is all of the cloud providers are able to be integrated with, but let's say you only subscribe to AWS and Azure in your organization, maybe Google as well. You could unselect the rest of these, click Save, and now effectively what that does is it prevents cloud credentials, cloud discovery schedules, as well as um, cloud service accounts for being created for those other clouds. In the future, if you do subscribe to any other providers, you could re-enable them and they'll be accessible for people to start using again. Now, let's see the two applications that we have that are gonna help you better manage your cloud. First, we'll start with cloud discovery, which is your one-stop shop for managing all of your cloud discovery schedules. When you first come in here, you'll see an overview, your Cloud Discovery homepage, which shows lots of different things as you can see here. Your most, all of your Cloud Discovery runs in the last 30 days, how many have completed? How many are still active? How many are canceled? Your upcoming schedules. These are schedules that will, will be ran in the future. Here you can see that um, configuration item trend chart so that you can see if you're trending upwards or downwards in your cloud resource discovery. Over here, um, you can see your cloud discovery errors. Uh, it's also a trend. You could also click into any of these to see the specific errors. Down here, we can manage our credentials. So we have 15 cre credentials being used across AWS, Azure, and GCP at the moment. You could go into these credentials. Uh, if you need to update them, you can do that. Uh, if you need to set up new ones, you can do that as well. Here you can see your, your mid servers and here you can configure your mid servers to be used for cloud discovery. And service accounts. 
Uh, so you could here you, you you can see how many service accounts you have across the, the clouds that you have set up for discovery. And then down here you could see cloud VMs by data center. So if we were to go ahead and create a new discovery schedule, it'll simply ask you for a few things. And I'll show you what those things are by looking at an existing cloud discovery schedule for AWS. First thing it, we see here before we get into creating a new one or seeing the details of it is we see a summary specific to this schedule. So we see the total number of cloud resources that have been discovered by this schedule. We see anything that is newly discovered since the last run, anything that was absent since the last run, any cloud discovery errors, as well as how long the last run uh, took to, to occur. And then down here, we see charts of resource counts from, from the recent runs. Once again, anything in ServiceNow, you can click into, you can see the specifics behind it, as well as average time it took to complete these discovery runs. So let's go ahead and look at the details of this discovery schedule by clicking Edit. And we can see that it just, it just asks for some basic information. We have to give it a name. We have to choose which cloud provider it is, and we have to choose which mid-server is going to run the schedule. Next, we will pick a service account. We could use an existing service account, or we could you know, choose to create a new one. Here we have the ability to test the account as well. Uh, here I mentioned earlier about credentials. Each service account requires a credential record in ServiceNow that has rights to the clouds to be able to do that discovery. If we click Next, we'll see we can choose which data centers we are discovering. So for example, this one here is only doing um, these two, or you could choose to do all the data centers. And then the last thing here is, um, or second to last thing, is do we want to discover the virtual machines and do more of a deep dive OS discovery? If you turn that on, assuming you had credentials on the ServiceNow instance that had access to those OSs, you could gather the OS level details from all the virtual machines behind there. And it would automatically run right after this cloud discovery schedule finishes. And then finally, uh, what schedule do we want to set? Right. So here I have daily at noon. Um, and then we can choose some other parameters here. If we cancel it, if it's running longer than one day or one hour, we can finish and run it, or we can just go back to the cloud discovery schedules page. Let's go back to the Cloud Operations Workspace homepage. We just saw how to set up and manage discovery of our cloud resources, but where do we see the resources that we just discovered? This is done through the Cloud Resources Inventory Dashboard, which is a new feature of our May 22 release of the Cloud Operations Workspace. Here we have an overall view across all clouds of the number of resources by configuration item classes, by region, by cloud service account, as well as a view of the incoming events across all cloud providers that will help us keep our CMDB up to date in a near real time fashion. We also see our cloud discovery errors, as well as our stale CIs. Now, stale CIs are those that have not been discovered in the past 30 days. These CIs have typically been taken offline and can be removed from billing, from monitoring, et cetera, right? Now, organizations typically have a process in place for managing the lifecycle of CIs, and these would normally be cleaned up through that process. We can filter this dashboard by cloud provider, by region, by service account, and by CI class. So for example, we can choose just to look at the US East 1 region. And what this does is it filters the dashboard and shows all resources that are part of that region. And maybe our goal right now is just to see our virtual machine instances. So if we click on the CI classes, and we start typing in virtual, we can click on virtual machine instances. 
Now here we see the dashboard now shows data that just pertains to the filter that, that we just selected. So let's click into the bar chart to see our virtual machine instance resources. Now this, this list of resources here, or, or 456, are all those that meet the criteria that we had to filter on. If we go into this specific resource, this is a VM instance um, that I own, and we can see that all of the configuration details about this server. These next few tabs showcase why multi-cloud visibility is critical in managing technology service operations. Now the power of using ServiceNow for your technology service operations platform is that it's underpinned by one architecture and one data model. One architecture means that all platform applications can seamlessly work together and are enhanced by a set of core capabilities, such as workflow, integrations, AI, ML, you know, just to name a few things. And one data model means that all applications leverage a single system of record, or that CMDB, that is built following a common data model. So you have visibility into the lifecycle of all service operations functions that occur against your resources. And for example, we see there is a change request open against this VM instance to upgrade it to a larger size because of a performance issue. And here we see the incident for a slow performance that spawned the change request, right, or the need for the change request. And then here we see a list of all the tasks that are currently open against this resource. Um, this could be any platform task, right? So I change and incident are part of IT service management, but certainly you could have um, security incidents here, alerts, vulnerabilities, um, any, any type of resource that the platform can relate to this CI. Now, we see that this VM has eight tags associated with it. And we see that there is a key called app and a value of train operations, as well as a key called ENV and a value of production. Right, application and environment tags are extremely useful in creating tag-based service maps to quickly gain business context of cloud resources. And we can also use the tag governance application to set organizational tagging policies and audit tags against these policies, and then remediate the tags in the CMDB. And you could also do that in the cloud uh, with our ITOM governance solution. But this will ensure that we can easily create tag-based service maps and understand the impact on our cloud resources to our business. And I've included links below to how-to videos for both tag-based service mapping and for tag governance so that you can learn more about these features. Now, if we open up the dependency view, we can see the relationships for this resource. Right here we see the virtual machine instance, and here we see all of the cloud metadata. We see that this was a T2 medium. We see the storage volume. We see the cloud management network, the storage mapping, and the data center, right, US East 1. And we can see all the information about the data center as well. Um, and here we see there is a tag-based application called train operations. Right, so if we look at our details a little bit further, we can see all of the associated CIs in the map. We see our current changes that are, that, you know, that are happening. We see the incident that we opened up, and we see related services. Hmm. So I said earlier that application and environment are really extremely valuable in creating tag-based service maps. So if we look at the service map that was created automatically with tag-based service mapping, we see that you know, you know, our application is called Train Operations, and we see that we have our, this is the CI, this um, this Windows server, and we also have a cloud database. So now that we've seen all the details about this specific cloud resource, I'll go back to our cloud operations workspace. So we just saw how cloud operations workspace provides a single pane of glass for visibility of your multi-cloud resource estate. We saw how you can choose which cloud providers are available for integration with ServiceNow. We saw how you can create and manage your cloud discovery schedules. 
And we saw how you can visualize all of your discovered cloud resources. So by using Cloud Operations Workspace, you'll be able to gain automated visibility to multi-cloud resources very easily and drive technology service operations excellence. If you have any further questions about Cloud Operations Workspace, please leave a comment below or reach out to your ServiceNow account team. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.